Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Let's Play Pokemon Soul Silver. This is the special edition episode, I guess I'll call it. You know, uh, every other week we're going to be coming out with an episode of this on Saturday, so this is really a bonus episode to everything going on, and with that I'm going to take a lot of liberties on cutting a lot of junk out and just showing like the nitty gritty stuff. So today we're going to be doing the Ruins of Alf. The majority of the next route, which I think is like Route 32, will have some evolutions there. You know, some good stuff there. And we will also have um, a little teaser for what's to come for the next episode. So hopefully you like this episode. I'm going to put it in the beginning here. If you do like this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff is free for you on your end and greatly motivates myself to make videos just like this in the near future. I also am tweaking the audio a little bit. So in the past, the audio of the gameplay has been a little bit louder and my voice has been a little bit quieter. I'm kind of reversing that role in this Let's Play because when I go back and watch the videos, it doesn't seem to fit just right the way I like it. So hopefully this is an improvement and will carry on until our traditional into our traditional episodes coming out throughout the week on Tuesday and Thursday there. And then for, if you're a first time viewer, we're also playing Kingdom Hearts 2 on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you're into that, go check those videos out as well. But here, yeah, there's not much to do in the Ruins of Elf, like right away. And I don't have any Pokemon that can learn the, the big, uh, the, the Rock Break, Rock Smash, whatever it is, that move. I don't have any Pokemon on my team right now that can currently learn that. And this isn't a huge initiative of my own at this point in time, so I'm okay with just completely skipping this portion of the game. If I'm going to be brutally honest, you don't really get a whole lot of it. Maybe you get an unknown Pokemon, but... It's, uh... You know, that's... It, it's just part of this game. It, it's something cool. I really wish... I'm going to be fly-on-the-wall-here kind of perspective, but I wish that unknown... Like, I wish there was a secret around them, right? Like, they're the biggest... I'd, I wouldn't classify them as a legendary Pokemon as much as they're an oddball Pokemon. But I always wished, like, if you had six on your team, you form, like, the swarm of unknown Pokemon that they have in, like, the movie with Entei, which is the last Pokemon movie I've seen, so do not expect me to reference Pokemon movies in the future. But I, I always thought that as a legendary Pokemon, like, six of them swarming and they learn some kind of cool attack outside of hidden power that's like really powerful with 100 percent accuracy would be amazing but i digress now we are going we're on the route i did not want to include all of the route encounters in this video it just kind of felt over the top but i think here we're gonna start with uh zapper man which i wish i named shocker in retrospect it would have really fit my team name as well here but you can see shocker's getting i'm, I'm gonna refer to him as shocker is that fine? Is that okay? Can I do that on my own Let's Play? I think I can. Shocker is getting some good EXP here. Um, I want him to level up, but also Hooter is not doing good in the level up department, and especially by the end of the episode. He is kind of underleveled for our team, and with our next gym badge coming up being a bug-type gym leader, I want him to be roughly level 18 before we even approach that. Now, we do have... Um, if you're familiar with the game, we do have Slowpoke Well that's going to be coming up in the next episode, and I think we could get Hooter a good chunk of EXP through that, but it really is, um, it's getting tricky. There's not a lot of areas where I can really level up a flying-type Pokemon. This is a good area to do it, especially this battle specifically, because it's just a bunch of Magikarp. Even if they're level 15, all they're going to know is Tackle, but... Unfortunately, our next two encounters are level 5 Magikarps. So with that being said, we don't get a ton of experience out of this fight. At least not the level of experience that I was looking to get for Hooter here today. It's not the end of the world, but... You know, it, it does kind of stink in some regards. And with that being said, you know, when something's going down the tubes, if you're having a rough time, there's only really one thing to do. Just open a soda pop. That's all that you can do. And just hope that all your worries go out the window, right? And I feel like every time I go to do these videos, like up until right before I started voice recording, my voice was completely clear and now I have like some congestion in my nose. I have no idea what that is. Maybe it's like the angle that I sit in my chair when I actually do these videos, but it 
always seems to happen to me consistently. But there we go. We beat that fisherman. I wanted to show a little bit of that route. And then we could actually get into some of the, the mountain stuff here. We have a trainer, of course, that we're going to go up against. Because this stuff here is, I think it's Union Cave. This stuff is more the stuff that is the bread and butter of this game, I would say. Excuse me. I tried to do that off camera. I hope it really doesn't come through all that much. There we go. Let's take that Pidgey out. I don't think that's going to be enough EXP for Gator to level up. Nope. Send out another Pidgey. Let's switch Pokemon. Let's send in Shocker. I'm calling him Shocker the whole rest of the Let's Play. I don't care. That's what I should have named him. That's what he will be referred to as moving forward. Let's do a Thunder Shock here. This should be a one hit KO. This should be really easy for Shocker. A no brainer win. That's yeah, and a lot of this episode, I hate to say it, but last episode we got a gym badge. You know, we got a lot accomplished, lots of things going on. This episode is gonna be a little bit more tamed down. We're making our way through the ruins of Elf and then through this little section of the game here and then just sort of setting some layups for next week's episodes. Um, next week we'll probably move through Slowpoke well on episode number one and then episode number two will likely be getting our second gym badge if I play my cards right. So lots of good stuff coming up for next week. Um, I forgot how lengthy this part of the game was. I also do want to spend a good chunk of time. I forget when we actually get headbutt, but I will full disclosure here. In the past, every time I played through this game, Heracross has been the MVP of this generation. And I expect the same results this time around. I'm going to spend the hours it takes. I, I think it's made a little bit better in this version of the game if i am correct but i may also be incorrect but regardless if it takes me four hours to get a hair across we're gonna spend four hours getting a hair across i don't care it is a pokemon that is worthwhile to have on the team it is bug and fighting type two types that you will normally never see me use on my pokemon team past like episode number four i know if i'm playing through gen one butterfree is really good to have against brock just because you can learn Psychic at level 20 and you could grind it up so quickly and get that ability really quickly in the game and have something that could poison, put to sleep, use Psychic, and then just have a generic attack. It's excellent for like the first, I don't know, couple episodes of any Let's Play I've ever done of Kanto. Um, in Johto, I would say me getting a bug type is really really rare just because there's really no need the starters are all pretty decent um, I've never done a full playthrough with Chikorita but I do know as a, a young lad I chose Chikorita and that discouraged me even more from getting a bug type because the grass and the bug type to me kind of have a lot of overlap there's not really a reason to have one if you have the other but with that being said you know it's it's all part of the deal. I don't even know where I was going with that thought. That was just a stupid thought. <laughs> no, but in all reality, yeah, it's it's a rarity to have, number one, a bug fighting type in general. Number two, Heracross as a unit is just built. It is built. And as you will see later in this episode, I know it's not gonna help us in that regard, but we do not have an answer for both the poison type and as I think further, the psychic type. No answers for either of them. So I do think it's gonna be important to have answers for both of them. And I think Heracross is gonna be a good fit for the psychic type Pokemon, especially learning Megahorn. That's gonna be a pretty big advantage for Heracross. And even if we don't use it all the way throughout, because I can't remember what the accuracy on that move looks like, and I like to stick with things that are at least 90% accuracy. So that way I'm if I'm missing, it's not noticeable, the amount that I'm missing, but... Even if we don't stick with that platform, I think overall, Heracross is a strong Pokemon, and one of my favorite Gen 2 Poke... It might be my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon, outside of the starters that was put out there. It is 
such a unique Pokemon. It has gotten me out of so many situations. I know when I played through Gen 2 last time on the channel, I did not do a Nuzlocke. It was just a casual play. I went out. I spent hours. You can go and look back on that playlist. I spent a full episode, I think, trying to get Heracross, and I took three hours of content and made it into like a 40 minute video and when we finally got him i was ecstatic and he did turn out to be an amazing team member throughout the entirety of the let's play so i'm expecting the same results here and sticking with my rules that i set out for this let's play with just the simple fact being number one don't pick Cyndaquil because it makes the game overly easy and then number two only use generation two pokemon he fits that mold. There's really no side effect on my rules to getting him. And I can't have Kadabra. So I might as well get what, in my opinion, is one of the greatest Gen 2 Pokemon on my team. And I could see one. I thought about this. I could see one making the argument that maybe Fortress is a better pick. I've never used Fortress, and let me tell you, I am very uncomfortable using Fortress. Why? I really like the glass cannon approach to Pokemon. All out attacks, and the battle as quickly as possible. Progress, move forward, move on. I think Fortress is a better Pokemon in the long term, but I do not have, I don't even know how to word it, I guess the, I do not have the mindset to go into a Pokemon battle in that way. I, it, it's such a complex thing to understand, but if you understand, you understand exactly what I'm saying. Like, some Pokemon battles are super quick, and some are long and drawn out, but the victory is almost kind of guaranteed, and that's what Fortress is. I'm not amongst that group of players, even though that group of players is more strategic and more thought out. That's just not me personally, so... To players that like to play like that, double thumbs up to you. If it was up to me and I could trade and do a whole bunch of BS to make this let's play go as smoothly as possible, we would have a scissor. A hundred percent we would have one. I can't do that. I could probably cheat and get one in the game here, but I don't want to do that. I feel like that's really unfair to you guys watching the video. Just somebody playing through the game as whatever uh, just you know a solo playthrough you can't get scissor but i would say if there was one pokemon that i would play sailor cross with it is scissor scissor is a dominant pokemon it is a killer it is likely uh, uh, it's in the top five with hair cross i have to give it that if you're excluding the starters, the Scissor and Heracross are probably tied for me. I use Scissor in Pokemon Let's Go Arceus. I was able to capture in like one of the void situations there that happened in that game. And I have to tell you, it performed. It was a powerhouse throughout all of that game. I only got rid of it because I really wanted to see what using a Rhydon would feel like. And I felt like in a lot of instances, Rhydon's a bit slower, but it's as hard a hitter as Scissor is. And honestly, I wish I stuck that game out, out with Scissor. Because Scissor was a great Pokemon. And like I've said before, I don't know if I've actually said it like on a Let's Play episode, but I've definitely briefly mentioned it on a couple of other things going on. I plan to do Nuzlocke's on all of these games in the future. I want to do like the, the most relevant version, right? So for Gen 1, we're going to do... Pokemon Yellow. For Gen 2, we're going to do... Shit, what is the definitive version? Is it Crystal? I think it's Crystal, because I think there's Silver, Gold. Yeah, Crystal is the definitive version. Gen 3, we're going to do Emerald. For these ones, it's going to be a toss-up. I'll leave it up for you guys to decide. But I do want to do Nuzlocke's on all of these games once I beat them through. Um... And then we could even revisit and come back and do like 100% versions if we wanted to. But I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys if that's stuff that you guys want to see. I think at that rate we're planning things out years in advance, which 
I can't possibly do as a human being because I don't know what's going on next week, let alone a year from now. I do have a list of games picked out that I'd like to play a year from now on the channel, but it changes pretty rapidly. Because I do like to keep a good mix of like these old games that I play here mixed with the new games. Um, the biggest thing I have going against me right now is I really wish we were doing the Let's Play of the new Zelda game that just came out. Because that looks fantastic from everything I've seen. And I'm going to be brutally honest, I am playing it on the side. I am having a ton of fun with the game. But I really don't know how to like split that up into a Let's Play format without this channel becoming like this big time streaming channel, I guess is the best way to put it. That's what it would have to turn into. And with the amount of subscribers I have, I just don't feel like that's a viable thing to do at this point in time. But with that being said, because that does sort of circle back, I know this episode is really ranty. But um, with that being said, we are about to approach 50 subscribers. And that's why I put like the the outro sort of thing right in the beginning of this episode. Um, having 50 subscribers on YouTube would be a pretty big deal for myself. I'm not going to lie. I, I know it's not a lot. It's definitely not a lot. But it is a big milestone for the episode. If we do end up reaching 50 subscribers, we will have a 50 subscribers special. Um, what we will do on the 50 subscriber special, I have absolutely no idea. It could be anything. But whatever it is, it will likely be interesting. So if you want to help to contribute to that, like I said, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Especially subscribe, because uh, that kind of ties into the whole fucking purpose of doing this. But <laughs> regardless, I, you know, I just, I want to feel like it happened because people enjoyed the videos, not because I like artificially played with the algorithm or did anything to manipulate views and manipulate subscription counts so i'm very happy with where we are today but i'm also pretty optimistic as to where these videos could go in the future because i know that there's a lot of potential for improvement obviously this video is coming out in a very odd aspect ratio and zapper is evolving look at that no but obviously i know there's a lot of room for improvement it's gonna take a certain amount of involvement from the community for me to really spend time on things but right now I'm focusing on quantity with some level of quality versus just like pure quality one to two videos a week and they're all spectacular because you know the channel needs some insight before it can actually grow and become what it needs to be in its matured state and hopefully we can all look back on these videos one day and say well, you know what, Average Joe? You were a goon back then. You were just a guy trying to make a living. But, you know, sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes it's what you gotta do. Just have some fun with it. Play around with the algorithm. Do some fun things. Have a few soda pops and just enjoy your time doing it. That's what we're doing right now. We're in the early stages. Look at this. With the rain advantage, we should have no problem dealing through all this. I apologize if you hear what sounds like ripping in the background. The dog is definitely having the time of her life with some bones here on the ground. She's ripping them apart, having a good time, and she just got a grooming done the other day, so she's looking good. No floof, as we call it over here, flying all over the house. But now we are approaching the final three minutes, so I will do my actual outro if you like this episode please feel free to like comment subscribe all that good stuff is free to yourself and greatly motivational towards myself to making videos just like this in the future we will be playing pokemon soul silver on tuesdays and thursdays and then every other week which is why you're seeing this on a saturday every other week we'll be posting a video on a saturday because i know it's a longer game and i want to get through it in a two-month time span and quite honestly i feel like we're not going to do that but I'm going to try my best to do so, and then we will be playing Kingdom Hearts 2, one of my favorite games on the PlayStation 2 of all time. 
on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I've been having a ton of fun with that Let's Play. I really need to clean it up and get it so that way it's like one world per episode at this point in time, but we are slowly making our way towards doing that, and I feel like it's going to turn out to be a fantastic Let's Play because I have so much love for that game and that franchise as a whole, even though it gets convoluted and whatever. It's, it's a mess. I get it, but we are slowly working towards making that the best possible outcome it could be. But with that being said here, ladies and gentlemen, we do have about two minutes left. I normally do like to exit a little bit earlier. Um, I'm going to go in the grass here a little bit, and I'm going to train. And then, um, yeah, you'll get a little sneak peek as to what the hot topic will be next episode. It's the return of a particular team, which will likely be the name of the next episode because that's going to be like the central focus that they are back. But I'll let you enjoy that on your own without my amazing voiceover. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that'll be it. Uh, I hope you all had a snazzy and fantastic week this week. And uh, we hope to see you all here on the next one coming out on Tuesday. Or if you're a Kingdom Hearts fan, we will see you on Monday. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Enjoy the rest of the video without the voiceover, I guess. <laughs>